Hello and welcome to Bible Time. Uh, there's two websites that uh, I operate and maintain. It is uh, ProclaimingLight.com, also BigPreacherMan.com. I want to share with you a personal desire that I've had on my heart for some time, uh, possibly uh, because the Lord has called me into the ministry. And one of the most pressing needs that we have in the church and this is not uh, my own personal philosophy or my own idea. It is very much biblically based. It is called personal holiness. Uh, what we see in the church today, uh, whether you go to church or not, of course, that is a different issue for a different time. But what we see in most of our churches is a lot of people who uh, participate in Christianity but uh, when you reflect upon their actions and you look at how they live, it kind of tells a different story. Uh, the hypocrisy, if you will, is a very deadly sin, as all sin is. Now, one thing that I want to make perfectly clear before I share this burden is that we are only made holy through the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And he has called us uh, to faith in him and the only way we'll ever be saved and ever have any uh, aspect of holiness in our own lives is through trusting in his blood but the Bible also tells us how to obtain holiness and it's something that we all need to pay close attention to because the Bible says very clearly without holiness no one will see God uh, so it's a very important issue and we must drop our hypocrisy. And if we're uh, found lacking in holiness, well, we need to go to the Lord. The devotion comes out of 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 1. He is writing this general epistle to all believers. He says, therefore, in verse 13, therefore, prepare your minds for action. Be self-controlled. Do we self see self-control in our Christian circles today? Or do we see people that just run around doing what they choose to do? Self-control, submitting, consecrating yourself, being controlled by the Spirit of God, not by ourselves. He says, set your hope fully on the grace to be given you when Jesus Christ is revealed. As obedient children, now here it gives the hint. As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. Don't be conformed to the pattern of this world. Do not follow after the evil desires that are in your heart. Verse 15, he says, But just as you who were called is holy so be holy in all that you do for it is written be ye holy because I am holy since you call on the Father in heaven who judges each man's work impartially live your lives as strangers here in reverent fear now how in the world are we to gain understanding on how to be holy as he is holy? Now, some of you watching this may disagree with this, but that is okay. But Jesus himself said, There's two great commandments. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, all of your soul, all of your mind, and all of your strength. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Which points to the Ten Commandments. Now, if we, you and I, are to ever live a holy life, we must be obedient to follow the holiness of God. We look and we see all these people all around us, and maybe even some that's watching this, that love to proclaim that they know Jesus, but are still living in sin. You cannot continue to live in sin and be holy at the same time. Becoming holy through the shed blood of Jesus is by obeying what he has said. 
Jesus told the people that were going to stone the woman caught in adultery. You know the story well. He said, He who is without sin cast a first stone. And most people, most Christians will use that. Don't judge. If you're without sin, cast the first stone. But we forget that Jesus told her after he rebuked the crowd, he said, Now go and leave your life of sin. You see, we compromise way too much. Compromising is a dreadful sin because if we compromise one aspect, if we justify our sinful actions in any way, shape, or form, we're not being holy as God is holy. We have to approach the holy word of God and we have to do what it says. Apostle Paul says in Romans chapter 12, we know these verses very well as well. Most Christians do. But he says, Therefore, I urge you, brothers, I urge you, believers, in the view of God's mercy, offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. Don't just speak that you're a Christian. Live it. Be obedient to what God has said. He says, Living sacrifice is holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. And do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world. This world is sinful and wicked and it is tugging, pulling us away from Jesus Christ every single day. We have got to learn that the Bible says do not conform to the image of this world. Do not conform to the pattern of this world but be transformed by the renewing of our minds. That way we will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Now I understand that we live by faith and not by sight, and I understand that we are saved by grace through faith, but I also understand that Jesus, once we are saved, he has given us the Holy Spirit to live in our hearts so that we can live a holy life but it's up to us to submit ourselves and keep in step with the spirit so that we will not gratify the lust of the flesh galatians 5 tells us plainly the spirit is contrary to the sinful nature they are in conflict with one another my friends we need to keep in step with the spirit of god so that we can live a holy life Personal holiness, very important, but very much misunderstood and not practiced very often in today's society, especially, and I am talking about the church. So where are you? Are you living a holy and godly life that is pleasing to God the Father? If not, you may want to reconsider your faith and your trust, and you may want to uh, repent and do the things that the Bible says to do. And until next time, I want to encourage you to don't just hear the Word of God, but do what it says. Until next time, thanks for coming.